tuned into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Black Hollywood Live to Trend. I'm your host, Dario Kristen, and joining me today is a full panel. Full panel, Looks full like we house. got some color coordination yes. as well. We got Courtney Stewart. Hello, everybody. Our very special guest, Freddie Figures, today hey, in the thank house. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. And also from the UK, coming back to visit us again. She came is across the line, guys. Woo! Our London correspondent. Thank you for <laughs> coming in today. Yes, yes. I return back home. Yes. Back home, right. Back home, back home. You're bringing that, that, that energy into oh, the studio Oh, yes, today. I am. Like a black current. Look at me. Blackberry. <laughs> Sweet juice. Yes, come in here. Well, this is an exciting weekend. we got NAACP awards coming up. Yes. Fred, you got like a, an honoring dinner tonight, right? Correct, yeah. correct. So we have a pretty big dinner tonight. Yeah, well, we're going to have a lot of stuff we're going to talk about with you because this guy is an inventor. I mean, he's 30, and, and mm. he's already done more in his life than most people have I know. at, like, 80. So exactly. So I'm already just jealous. Create some more of that black history. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. Right, exactly. So we're going to hear about everything that he's got going on. But first, we're going to talk about a couple topics. A couple topics. So we're going to do our little we do our little political beat every week, sort of. And uh, many of you, maybe you, maybe not. Maybe you watched the uh, Democratic debates last night, got a couple laughs. It was a real interesting debate. If you guys can check it out, you might want to pull some of those clips. But we also got some very interesting news about the White House Correspondents' Dinner that's coming up. And as some of you know, our current president has been boycotting the Correspondents' Dinner for a few years because he was a little upset about some things that were said in the past. Mm -hmm. And he got offended and he decided he was never coming again. And he was the first president to do that since Ronald Reagan in 1981, I believe, when he had an attempted assassination. That's why he didn't go. He was sick. He was in the hospital. He got shot. But Trump decided he was giving up, whatever. So the last year, they basically tried to make the dinner a little bit more calm and stale, sort of. And they had like people doing, like professors giving speeches about the press and its significance in the United States. And this year, they decided, well, we're going to try to mix it up again. And our buddy Keenan Thompson from Saturday Night Live, longest running Saturday Night Live uh, member like ever. Congratulate. Because wow. wow. yes, Keenan yes, doesn't yes. get his yeah. props though. But I, like I Keenan deserves some props, guys. He's been doing SNL forever. He's going to be the MC of the event this year. And uh, also comedian Hassan Minaj, who hosts Patriot Act on uh, Netflix, which is also awesome, is going to make a couple appearances and do a couple performances. And they're trying to like ham it back up a little bit. Some of you don't know the White House Correspondents Center. Most people don't even know really what it's for and even some of yeah. the people that go don't really know what it was ever for but they always used to say it's sort of like the press corps prom and uh, uh, it's like the, uh, the Oscars basically or maybe the Golden Globes because people get a little more shaky at the Golden Globes. So that was what DC's version of the Golden Globes. So anyway, they're all going to be back. It's going to be fun and exciting but there is a uh, the new uh, foundation chair, he wants to make sure that he's continuing the legacy of kind of being a little bit more serious and sort of celebrating the idea that um, this is about celebrating free speech in this country and how important the free press is because, as many of us know, there's been some attacks on the free yes, press. Yeah. Yes, there have. And his name's Jonathan Carl. He's the new president of the Correspondents Association, and he is basically introducing a couple new awards to recognize accountability in journalism and courage in journalism. So he's going to be giving out some new awards, and they kind of want to keep the space about moving forward with the press and how important the free press is in this country. Yeah. What do you guys think? Having somebody come back, making it funny and celebrating free press, how important? I mean, I think they need it, you know, and, and I think I think Keenan is safe enough to be the person who does it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, he he'll push the envelope a little bit, but he's still gonna keep it keep it very safe. You keep know? It safe. And wasn't this the same dinner that Technically, Obama roasted Trump. Yes, he so did, and that's how we. That's how this all yes. kind of started yep. in a lot of ways. Yes, it was. Uh, which 2011, I believe. 2011. With Seth Meyers. Yeah, with yeah. Seth Meyers. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm down. You excited? I'm down with it. Excited? Yeah. Do you want an invitation? Uh, would you go? Yeah, I would go. You would go. Yeah, we go. Okay. I mean, me please. <laughs> <laughs> UK representation. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Because we don't have these things in the UK. I mean, not not that I know of. Because we have um two big places so basically we've got House of Commons and we've got House of Lords mm -hmm. right and they're not the Lord yeah they're just guys <laughs> with some wigs you know and they, just they still wear the wigs, wear the wigs? Yeah. yes they do okay yeah. I want to change them up man give them some good weave or something yeah, yeah 9 99 you know? but still <laughs> or, or a haircut <laughs> yeah something give them something a wig cut and then um <laughs> 
But the thing is, we don't have that here. Uh, well, here in Britain, we don't have yes. it in London. And being born and growing up in London, it's very like uh, what's the word? It's the opposite of Americans. So when they want to say something about somebody else, we take it out to not the streets, but the House of Commons okay. on the common ground, so the benches, and they go, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Mr. Speaker, let me say something. Yeah, I hate you. And Mr. Speaker, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for saying that. And I hate your mum too, but I love her food. And that. that that's what it's yeah. like. That's how it goes down. But they say it in a very posh way. Yeah. So I'm like, and adore your mother, and da 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 da. It's like what? So people <laughs> still polite. from a common ground don't know how, don't know, understand what they're saying. But with the White House uh, thing that you guys have, we know the celebrity, we know the yeah. razzmatazz, mm-hmm. or even the senators are all looking yes, nice. Yes, the senators get all dressed you know, up nice. All that stuff. Everybody mingles. You know, and then we start seeing stuff on social media, them dancing, doing some like, you know, some some. Sh- Harlem shakes. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> <Right. laughs> Only once we had that in the House of Commons, you know. Yeah. And um, there's a black woman called Diane Abbott, and she, I think she was in there, and a couple, a couple other black MPs, members mm-hmm. of Parliament, it stands for. Mm-hmm. But we don't see that every day yeah. in the UK. Mm-hmm. So I would love to be in that White House uh, correspondent thing you guys have. Yes. Putting it out there, they mean you may get an invitation. Yeah. You know? and, and you said Barack Obama, he's the one who actually began the whole added some extra sauce, some spice to he, the. He had well, a little spice. I mean, it, it's always sort of been a, an, an event to sort of roll the exactly. president a yeah. little bit and yeah. kind of do it was kind of like getting to in good in good nature yeah like jabbing yeah. a little, jab, a little yeah. bit yeah. but yeah it kind of you know it went a little extra apparently in the obama years and yeah because we yeah. were first introduced by that well i say we but most people in my community south london big up um yeah we're introduced to it when one guy um said the n-word and um and the white house correspondent but i don't know who it was the guy with the glasses bald head um, i don't remember that worked but... for insecure or something like that Oh, everyone, know, everyone I Google it. Google yeah, it. Google that and that's when we knew about it. I can't remember the guy's name today, but um, that was. I have to look that up. That's a good okay. one. You know? Freddie, would you go? Yeah. yeah, I would. I think it's an excellent opportunity for Keenan, and mm. I think it's something. I would have, I would have done. Yeah. Well, you already dressed for it, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're ready. Like, Looking like very nice in this suit. Like, suit. <laughs> Suits fit. You make me up, up my suit game. <laughs> no, right? Like underdressed <laughs> for my show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, so I mean, yeah, and come keep. I mean, come. We talk about our little politics every week, and we just, you know. The free press is really important, and obviously we are a digital network, so we got a little more freedom, and we want to kind of keep it that way. So right. uh, yeah. everybody keep paying attention and keep voting and all that good stuff, because they're mm. trying to judge the internet, too. And right. everything. That'll change things for us, guys. It'll that change it will. things. So, that yeah. it will. Anyway, uh, I can't wait to see what he does. Yeah, me either. And, and speaking of roast, on the total side note, did you watch the, uh, um, the NBA roast? I didn't watch okay. it, no. All right. All right but I, I've heard some... Yeah, it was it was pretty good. good. About it. it was yeah. good. Yeah, it was good. To, you guys should Google that. Check Google out the clips. Yeah, Google clips. Check those that, out for sure. All right, we're gonna move on to our next story. Lark Voorhees. Oh, uh, so, uh, who was I say about the Bell fan? I was. Did, did I, I have it in the UK? Uh, well, yeah, we um, so we have Nickelodeon and stuff. Again, side note, Keenan, <laughs> Keenan Kel, Good Burger, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we did yes. watch them. Back, I'm a 90s baby, not 91. Mm-hmm. So we did watch Save by the Bell. However, it was on Channel Four, okay. our terrestrial te- uh, television. But my parents, they said, don't watch that because there's only like one black woman there, and you know. Well, the one black woman is Lark Voorhees, yes. and so she's in so the it's news her. again. It's her. Yep, yeah, she's in the news because, okay. w- like everything else, they're doing revamps of every, every no, show. No, please right. don't bring that. They are. Put that bed in the drawer. No, nope. that, that, no. They're, they're bringing, bringing a revamp back. back and they're saved by the it. bell. They're NBC has it. announced that they will be bringing it back, and so far. Uh, let's see who we have. Uh, Zach Morris. Zach Morris. Uh, uh, Mark Slater. Paul. Or Mark Paul. Gosler. Gosler. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Mario Lopez. He's and Slater. Elizabeth Berkeley as well. Jesse Spano. Jesse Spano. Clearly, you know, I was Elizabeth, a fan. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, you were a fan in the house. And so they're bringing back the show. And Lark Voorhees, as you mentioned, was the only black character, yeah, the main yeah, black yeah. character on the show. She was not asked back. And they're saying, uh, well, she was recently on Dr. Oz, mm-hmm. and we know that through the years she's been battling with mental, mental health, health issues, issues. Okay, um, right. especially with bipolarism, and so she's mm. been dealing a lot with that, and she feels that that's one of the reasons why she was not asked back to come on the reunion show. That's so not fair. she had a very heartfelt moment with Dr. Oz speaking about the challenges that she's had through the years with her mental issues and and how the fact that she feels like it's affected her career. So yeah. Yeah, what do you guys feel about that if if they did not ask her back for that particular reason? Was it just recently this yes. happened? Yes. Yeah. So nowadays people they don't communicate. Communication is key by the way. Right. Cuz um again, side note, if I didn't communicate with any of you guys, I wouldn't have been here. Even tw- back in 2016 and like now. Yes. So, like, things like that, it's, it's so important. Like, yeah. who who is um, someone who she's connected with from back then and said bad bell days? 
Because I know that she went through a bit of a, yeah. a drama throughout yeah. her career. Whilst all the others all looking nice, looking young, looking tight, looking, yeah, everything's going on. You know? Yeah, most of them have gone on to have other careers. Yeah. Well, well, obviously, we know Mario and, and Mark. Yeah, yeah, and, they're showing um, in Britain. Elizabeth actually is She did a few well. things, yeah. And Tiffany sure. Thiessen. Uh, she, she worked for a while. I think she, she was, had a family and yeah, kind of stepped away a little bit. bit. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's that typical kind of, um, because when they were doing Saved by the Bell, were they teenagers at the time? Yeah, it's, it's, early it's, 20s. Early it's 20s, that yeah. typical yeah. kind of narrative of, oh, um, you know, there's always that one person in the group of the cast, especially in the 90s or 80s thing, children's thing, like a Power Rangers Saved the Bell, someone's always messed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After. that's true. Yeah. They never hang on to that agent or um, and blossom yeah. in the adult. That's always one. yeah. I think that was more of a screech. Dustin yes. Diamond. Dustin that's Diamond. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. We did have that one. How do you feel about it, Freddie? Um. Yeah. They should bring her back. Of course. Yeah. 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 Were you a fan of Say by the Bell? You I know? watched. I watched it. You know, in the mornings before going to school. So <laughs> I think that's what we all did. That's what we all did. That's what we all did. Yeah. Yeah. And, they, I mean, they, and it was on so many reruns. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, they literally. I feel like they would play it back to back to back to back. Back to back. Yeah. But how do you guys feel about just reboots in general? Like that they're because they're doing so many on TV right now. Like, are we excited about this? or do we think we need to be being more creative? I mean, my problem with reboots is that if it was already a great show, why reboot it? Because, That's what I was going to say. I mean? If it right. was something that was a little suspect, okay, fine, maybe you could put a little extra swag sauce on it. But if it, it was literally a great show already and there's been several of those and movies, why are we redoing it? And why? Hmm. Why there's so many other projects to me that can be redone or re not redone, be created Create from scratch. Mm -hmm. And so why are we going back to that right. old formula? And you take well, it away from the original theme as well. Exactly. Yeah. But you're a businessman, Freddie, clearly, and do a very good job at it. From a business perspective, obviously it's mm -hmm. an established brand. True, right. So do you feel like we're like uh, that the business part of it should outweigh the creative part of it since um, it's entertainment? No. Well, I think the creative part is the main focus of this and you know some reruns um, should just not come back because it, it kills the original theme yeah. of, the, of the existing show yeah I agree with that what were some of your favorite shows that you watched uh, it's, it's funny you know my favorite television show was in the heat of the night. Oh, hey, I'm I not mad at you, brother. I still watch the reruns. I yeah. missed the two. Yeah. Can someone tell yes. this British girl what is in the heat of the night? That sounds like something else. It was like that. That sounds like something else. Well, yeah. it, started, it was a yeah. movie initially. Yeah. 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 Um, in the what late '60s with yeah. Yeah. Um, Sydney Poitier. Yeah. And then oh God, they made it a TV Happy show. Happy birthday, Sydney. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then they made it a TV show in the '80s with Carol O'Connor. Carol O'Connor. Yeah. And I forget the. I just call him Archie Bunker. Yeah. Exactly. Archie Bunker. Mr. Tibbs, I forget his real name, but yeah. Anne Marie Johnson, Anne -Marie Johnson was in yeah. it as well. It was a great, it was a great hour drama. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, actually, they still. The funny thing is, I saw this weekend. I was watching a little. Uh, they were doing a marathon of yeah. In the Heat of the Night, and it's the other one, Matlock. Mm -hmm. Matlock. They were doing like a, a whole thing on those, and those just I saw my a shows. couple people that. I've, AJ Johnson was on the episode I saw when she was ah, a guest yeah. on our show last week. Yeah. So wow. it's, it's, I don't know if they should redo it though. Do you think they should redo it or just keep it the way no. it is? The original cast. Keep, original keep, cast. It. keep it original. Yeah. 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 That, that was, was a good great, one. Was, right. that was a good one. That was a good one. I forgot one. about right. in the heat of the night. Me, yeah. Go back and go download some more <laughs> episodes. It was always in the name, like it was always sweaty because they in Mississippi and it was hot right, all the yeah. time. And there was always like a racial line to it. Well, yeah, it was all racial and police and it was great. That was a great show. I gotta watch this. I gotta write this down. You need to, you you need need to, to find that. Find it on YouTube. You'll, you'll, yeah. It's, 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 That's it's a good wild. one. All right. Well, well show. speaking of racial lines, this has also been in the news a lot this week. Uh, one United Bank. They have. Um, they are a bank, uh, African American bank that mm -hmm. that is focused on giving um, black owned businesses money. So they have a a special credit and debit card that they've created. They had Killer Mike on one, I believe, mm -hmm. maybe like a year or so ago. And then now they have a new one. It's Harriet Tubman yes. doing <laughs> the Wakanda, you know, the, the, the Wakanda. The Wakanda, you know, cross. The Wakanda cross. So the Wakanda cross. some people hate it, some people love it, but the bank is unapologetic about it because the <laughs> president, Terry Williams, said this. She said, listen, th this we've seen growth. Um, by 10, she said by 10, uh, 10 times the growth from their normal volume off of this, this credit card. Oh. So she said that they've also seen a bank account signups increase since this credit card has gone out with uh, Carrie well, Tubman doing the Wakanda. I, mm -hmm. Well, I'm here for that. How y'all feel about it? I support it. I support it. I don't know. I mean, I get why they're, I mean, she's doing the Wakanda cross because they're trying to attract young people Younger. as right. well yeah. as respect 
of Thor and not to snub it not getting Harriet on our $20 bill yeah, yeah. I was going to say that I was going to say that like, oh, right so that. I think that's yeah. really smart that they decided to do, and I don't know how long that was in the process maybe they thought of it long before we were going to put Harriet mm. on the $20 bill right, but right. to me it, it, it seems like a good stab at the people who would like Harriet don't need to be on the twenty dollar bill. Right. Harriet need to be everywhere. <laughs> yeah. How about Harriet, that? Right, right. How about that? How about that? All right, Freddie. Who would you like to see on a credit card? Who, what what hmm. image would you like to see? I would say President Obama. Oh, that's um, a good one. I think that's going. I think that'll, that'll yeah. be there. Yeah. Eventually. I would yeah. say um, other black inventors. Okay. That mm-hmm. people have forgotten about. Um, um, black inventors from even Thomas Edison Day. You mm. know that supported the electricity with the light bulb. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm here for that. How Maybe. much longer do you think we're going to be using credit cards? Uh, right, that's another thing. Digital currency is taking over, so we'll see. I don't think they ever would take, would take away credit cards, but we'll see what the future holds. See what the future holds. Well, <laughs> I think you are the future. <laughs> Clearly. And you are holding it down. Yeah. Clearly. So, that, listen, we got to talk about your business because this, when, as soon as I started reading your bio, I, I couldn't put it down, man. I mean, wow. 30 years old. I mean, inventor, you've created your own wireless company. I mean, you have a, you, you got products, products up here that we can even, right. we're even going to get into, but your story from the beginning was already interesting. So tell us a little bit about how you transitioned from being a kid into this, this world of technology. Well, it comes, you know, back from my childhood. My father, um, a little bit earlier before that, um, I was abandoned at birth. So I never knew my biological family. To this day, I n- never met them. Mm. And I was adopted by two loving parents that were going into their 70s. So when you mm. think about wow. somebody in their 70s, they're not even thinking about kids. They're thinking about grandkids right. and great-grandkids, yeah. Yeah. not adopting a newborn and raising him. So m- my, my father um, took me to a place called Goodwill. He bought me a computer. I took it apart when I got home, put it back together, and went from there. So you just—I mean—it was just your natural instinct. You were just like, "I am—I'm about to revamp this computer." Here. Right, right. So I, I stayed in the house every day, all day, because my parents were advanced age, so they couldn't take me outside to really play football or basketball. So they got me encyclopedia sets, um, which I'm a collector of those, by the way, and um, different other books. So running around the house, playing with different components, taking part of their VCR, their television. And just old radios, and mm-hmm. just you know, putting them together. I had a I had a soldering gun as well, mm. so I was building out circuit boards as I was a kid. I was wow. I, well, I was playing you know <laughs> Atari, <laughs> <laughs> wasting my life away. I was like Atari, Nintendo, <laughs> <know>. Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> but at what point? So you were always kind of tinkering as a kid and like right. figuring things out and all of that. At what point did you figure out like? I can, this is a business. I can turn these things into yeah. other things to really make it. When like I got, it became a viable concept to you. When I became 12 years old, I had an opportunity to get a full-time job at the city of Quincy. So I was a computer technician, and I repaired computers every single day, maybe, oh gosh, maybe 100, 200 a week. Wow. And at 12? Yes, yes. So I started, I started out in the after-school program or working on their computers, and the mayor at the time ran the nonprofit after-school program, and she said, hey, you know, I'm going to give you a job at the city. I got that job, and I became that computer technician from the age of 12 to 14. Um, I, w- I transitioned over around 14, 15 to become the network administrator, so I created an intra- intranet system throughout the city. So when you think about... Um, pressing a, a, a button on your phone and being transferred to a different extension across town, 15 years ago that didn't exist. So I yeah. built out a internet system that connected police, fire, EMS, and wow. the city together. I mean, just just even have the maturity <laughs> at, at 14 to be, you know, and the, I'm blown away. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just blown away, man. And even the fact of how you even just knew naturally how to do things like that. Right, right. Just sitting around playing with different, um, I had day-to-day experience of just playing with the components. So yeah. I learned from breaking them down to putting them back together. Oh, like a quality um, control. Like yeah, supposedly. yeah. yeah my, based on my brothers, they're both autistic, different spectrums. Yeah. And my youngest one is 12 years old. Wow. And he's going to be going to do... Um, uh, co- uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, coding. Yes. So coding construction, wow. but within the MI5. Ooh. Oh, yes. nice. that's wow. Nice. Do you know why? Because he was naughty one time, trying to hack into one system and to get a game from Japan. Wow. Ah. We live in England, so yes. you know the continent uh, rule. If I'm right. correct, 
um, you cannot download a certain game if right. when it's not being right. uh, qualified. Yeah. Yeah. So what my little brother done, 12, he was 11 at the time, uh, he went in there, hacked into a system, bleep, 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 ring, 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 my mum's house phone, hi mummy, and then, um, I rang, uh, <laughs> hi, <laughs> ring, ring, hello, this is MI5, yes, we have tracked something system, da, 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 da. I was like, wow. I had to, I had to break out right. the laptop and take <laughs> IP number, wow. I was like, yep. hold a minute, hey, say something, say something now, hello, yeah, exactly, see, you weren't me, yeah, and then, wow. when that happened, yep. Yeah. The internet service provider and they found that torrent file. Yeah. So, so they wow. found it. Found it a little brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I was playing Nintendo. <laughs> oh my god. I'm pretty sure at twelve yeah, I was like yeah. still playing in dirt sometimes. I was, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to go to the mall. Yeah, I yeah. You like, make me I feel real bad about shoes? myself ready. No. I need some new goals. No. So, so now you got Ooh, a bunch of stuff up here. Right. Tell me products about some of these products that, that you created. So, so I have the figure smart um glucometer. Um, do you know anyone with diabetes? I do. Yes, we yes. do. So Several. when they check their blood sugar, how do they keep a log of it? Mm, that's actually a good question. I'm not sure how much. They usually it. have to write it down. Yeah, or the I think machine. she writes it down. Yeah. yeah, so that's the thing of the past. It takes 157 seconds to go into a diabetic coma. Two minutes. Yeah. With the figure smart glucometer, as soon as you check your blood sugar, it instantly shares the results to your cell phone, your closest relatives, and your doctor. And it stores that information into the electronic health records. So if your blood sugar spiked abnormally high or abnormally low, everyone gets an amber alert status. The doctor then presses one button and comes in at a walkie-talkie, direct connection to the glucometer, and say, hey, I need to schedule you a doctor's appointment and get you in here. Wow. And wow. so it's like it basically catches it early. Well, it has algorithms that's tr training and tracking. So it monitors your entire glucose levels from okay. day one you start. Wow. Okay. I mean, and it, is this available everywhere? How do people get yeah, it? Yeah, so it's, like, ava it's available right now at figures.com. Okay. I mean, I'm just, I'm, once again, I'm blown away. We haven't even got to the other stuff yet. I'm like, sign me up. Yes. <laughs> and you have some ear earbuds? earbuds? Yeah, so I have my signature earbuds, oh, um, which pretty unique feature. When they're paired with the Figures F3, our smartphone, we have coding in it that automatically translates to different languages. So if someone calls you speaking French or Spanish, as long as it's paired with the Figures <laughs> F3, it automatically translates into it English. It translates it for you. Correct. Wow. And oh, I, I mean, right. That's what? talking about a lot of people. It's yep. not about Fully, trying to get in our phones, like right. Google Voice. Yes. Yes. Right, right, yes. right, right. This right, is amazing. Right. Fully waterproof, um, um, over 150 hours of talk time, and they're truly wireless stereo. And these are all available right now? We're all available at figures.com. And then what are, what are the other things that you uh, have Our on unique there? cell phone. So this is the Figures F3 cell phone. So if I asked you right now, can I borrow your phone, what would you tell me? Uh, sure. <laughs> really? What are you be using it for? Yes. So once, you, once, you, once you type in your password, I can go through your text messages, your pictures, and pretty much go through all of your content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With a figures phone, you can actually sign out, sign into a guest profile, and hand your phone off so you don't have to worry about any personal information going missing or any prying eyes. It's also good for children. If you have kids and mm. you can oh, unlock yeah. your phone, yeah. sign out, sign into the guest profile, and hand them your phone so mm. they don't see anything. Because they are quick to send those now. pictures. <laughs> yes. 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 You got it. You got it. <laughs> wow. I feel like that's just like selling off the shelves because. Yeah. Yes. So, and, and you know, and it creates, it puts two phones in one. You, have, you can have a professional um, um, line and then you can have a personal line. So um, even with dual SIM capabilities that we have, so when you sign out of your main profile and sign into your guest profile, no one can see any of your content of calls, text messages, or anything. So when you sign back into your profile, you'll see all of your missed phone calls and missed text messages. While you're signed out, all of your calls will go to line two. So it's a whole separate number, whole separate phone line. Wow. Fascinating. Oh, I mean, wow. That's and this is all under the your wireless company. Is that correct? The, is that the parent company? And then, that is the, that is the parent everything. company, and Figures Health is the vision of it. Okay. okay. And then we also have a foundation as well. I was going to say, that. tell me about the foundation. So the foundation I created because I believe in giving opportunities because I was given an opportunity. I was a, a saved. I was adopted. Mm -hmm. And with the Figures Foundation, I take 20% of all Figures Communications revenue to support that foundation. Yeah. So all of our products, um, when, when somebody purchases or you know service, or service plans, 
to su- part of that proceeds goes to support our foundation. Our foundation have sent over 30, 30 plus young at risk males to college, not just one semester, but the entire college experience. Yeah. We support breast cancer survivors. We have a school in Zambia that supports over 309 girls wow. that if, if it wasn't for our foundation, those girls would have been exposed to sex trafficking. Mm. Mm. So I believe in I believe in paying it for it and giving an opportunity to somebody else. Wow, I mean, it, we're it, all it, just like oh, I know, man. Just like, I know. Where did you come? Where from? did you come from? Hey. Right, right. I see the light oh. shining on your head perfectly. It's amazing. With these creations, you also have something that's a shoe because I know right. that your father um, has dementia. Well, he he passed mm-hmm. away, but he um, when I was seventeen years old, my was well, sixteen. My father started developing dementia, Alzheimer's. So when, as time progressed, it, it got worse. So I had to figure out something with my father. Some mornings he would wake up at 4 a.m. He would just leave home, mm. and he would forget to either put on his shirt or his pants, but he would always remember to put on his shoes. Mm. So I built, this is actually his shoe. So I built a circuit board to put inside of the shoe that has a uh, SIM card slot, a, a global positioning satellite, and a Hertz speaker. So I could say, I could go in on my phone and say, hey dad, where are you? And I would come in as a loudspeaker on his shoe and say, um, Fred, I'm walking somewhere, going wherever. I say, okay dad, just say it again, talk it to your shoe. As soon as he talked it to his shoe, an uh, image would pop up on my phone. Mm. Um, I would have aerial image, map image, and a, a 360 rotation image of where he is. I would get in my car and I would go pick him up. I could tell how many steps he's taken, I, I could see if he's standing up or sitting down. And this invention right here became the precursors of different medical alert systems mm-hmm. and smart dog collars. So I sold the technology in the shoe to start the Wireless Corporation. Wow. Mm. I mean, how long did it take you to even figure out how to create that? You know, this, so I know it's a process for each different it's a, thing. It's a, it's a process, and all of our products and services uh, mm-hmm. are designed to improve everyday lives. Even our wireless services from the Figures Communication, it provides cellular service and mobile broadband and international calling services. When I first started that company, I wanted to provide service in rural areas because where I'm from, we still had dial-up, but the bigger carriers didn't care about coming in because it wasn't enough return on investment to, to, to put their infrastructure there. Yeah. So I petitioned to become a public service utility to start providing wire, wireless services. Wow. wow. And then what's your big goal for yourself? Because you, know, you do so yeah, many things. My, my <laughs> big goal is honestly to impact and change the lives of others. Um, you know, if, 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 I could, if I could get to 2,000 at-risk males and at least save five, I've, I've, I've done it. But I honestly want to change the world for the better. Mm. Mm. How do you see, because obviously you've embraced technology and you want to embrace it to a place where it's helping and helpful to people, but we also sort of have this other side that a lot of us feel like technology has kind of invaded and changed our lives yeah, in a way right. that it's not great and right. it's not. How do you sort of find the balance in between that and moving forward? Because technology seems to advance exponentially, but obviously humans and what we're kind of mm-hmm. doing and how we live, we don't, we're all, we're trying to play catch up, well, basically. One thing, one thing about figures communication that the separate us from all the others we do not sell our users information we don't sell trends we don't sell patterns we don't sell any of the AI nothing so we keep all of that in-house because that's your privacy yeah. whatever yeah. you do with your phone that's you it should be remain behind closed doors yeah wow I'm just I'm just blown away <laughs> you know what I mean? it's amazing and then what also I found was interesting is that you, you don't necessarily, you don't have a college degree correct no and, and was what? school ever something that you thought about like I mean if you're creating all this already off what do you I mean you're working yeah, you're, you're, you're working yeah, you, right. exactly like, do you need that? do you need school at that stage but so when I was 16 years old I I, I did um, stop school um, I had to take care of my parents so I started figures um, computers and network installation so everyone was coming to me repairing computers or repairing repairing and I, I, I built um, a cloud computing system for a small company in Dothan Alabama to um, have all of their data from their physical files be transmitted over to a virtual files because a tornado came and devastated the area. So, I mean, it was folders and files everywhere. And people were like, oh, we can't get our information. So, yeah. so we built that and, and 
I, um, I sat inside of a classroom in college for maybe two weeks and listening to a professor talk about software and it just kind of like I've, I've already n knew all of it. <laughs> you're like, I already, you're like I already built a device. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm and, good. I, and, I, and I had an opportunity to uh, create an oil calibration system for um, gas stations that measure the amount of liters and gallons that go into your car because some gas stations were uh, skimming. So the, the, the calibration pump would come on and you would look, nothing hasn't came out yet. And then the next thing you know, all the gas started coming out. So they would take you know three, four, five cents off the top. And I built that program within a two week time period and I was paid over $80,000. So I looked at it as school wasn't for me and I can go directly into the private sector. Mm -hmm. How did you find the link though? Cause like you said, uh, you notice a problem like mm -hmm. the gas situation and then you created a solution. But a lot of people don't know how to take that solution of that link to get to businesses that need right. to buy it and right. need to, how did you make those leaps with business? So I, I be, before I do anything, I always go into deep meditation and I think about what is the problem what is the solution? What can the solution be? And how do we get it out there? Um, I mean, just as being an inventor, uh, I sit on different think tanks. So companies really come to us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just like even with patents, you have patent trolls out there. As soon as you get, get issued a patent, someone's going to be calling you. That's true. And saying, hey, yeah. I want to I want to acquire this. Even with our healthcare device, um, just recently I had a, 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 a massive company to approach me to say, hey, we want to purchase this, but I, I, I wasn't going to sell because it's against my moral values because I believe in putting people over profit. Mm -hmm. And they would get my product and just shelf it. I mean, you can get a one-year supply of uh, this glucometer, blood scripts, uh, lancing device, and control solution, which is $60. If you go to any pharmacy in America, a, a, a bottle of 50 scripts is going to cost anywhere between 30 to $50. Yeah, that's true. So I believe in keeping things affordable and and helping. What would you tell a, a young inventor um, who wanted some advice from you as far as like maybe they were thinking about going to school or, or not going to school? What would you tell them as far as like following a similar path to you? I would say follow your passion and don't let anyone tell you anything different. Um, growing up, I had people in my ear that told me, well, Freddie, you're not going to be able to do this and you're not going to be able to do that. And those same people never believed in me until they saw a check. Mm -hmm. And once they saw a check, they was like, you can build a spaceship. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, just, just, fo just follow your dream. Yeah. Well, your last name is Figures. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was divine. It was divine. It, 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 <laughs> it, it was coming in the universe either way. For well, sure. So since you work so much, what do you like to do kind of as your free time? You know, I like to read. Mm, and, and, and honestly, I love driving. Um, I have a, a lot of sports cars and exotic cars. So I bet you do. Oh, okay. I, I, what, what's one of your All favorite right, ones? So he likes um, I would say the Lamborghini Aventador and the AC Cobra. Um, and a lot of other race cars that I have. Okay. I, like the, I like the word a lot of other A lot other of other cars, cars. Yeah. you know. Okay. Some, pretty, some pretty fast cars I have to take on the track. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you reading? Uh, I read different encyclopedias. Um, okay. Ever since I was a child, I've always collected encyclopedias. To this day, I still collect them. For those of y'all that don't know what encyclopedias are, <laughs> I don't, yeah, that yeah, was I don't the paper Google. Yes. <laughs> right, the paper Google. The yeah. paper Google. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Don't watch that. True. We still have them in the UK. Yes. Even, yes. Them, even my house, my my mom used to have them. The beige and the burgundy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You gotta send me some. Yeah. <laughs> See, don't worry. I'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> well, you're you're creating so many different things. Where would you like to see yourself in like five years? Mm -hmm. Because you're already at, at an accelerated pace. You know. Mm -hmm. So where where would you like to go after five years? I, I would like to see myself venturing out into other um, ventures that finding problems to finding out what what I could what solutions can I come up with with other problems like for example I, I built a motorcycle helmet that prevents 
um, accidents. When you look at a biker, he usually have to turn around, and next thing you know, a car could be right into him. Yeah. I built a motorcycle helmet that has a camera in the back of it and a 4.5-inch screen on the, fr on the right eye and a 2.8-inch um, screen on the left eye. So you're able to see everything that's behind you. You don't have to turn around and look, and you're able to control your phone, and you have AM, FM, and satellite radio capabilities, so you can answer text messages, and you can answer phone calls from that helmet and continue to be hands-free. Wow. Okay. Well, I have a couple of requests for some products on that you can for me. We go. We'll talk offline. We'll talk about that after the show. And I will be investing in your stock. But, yes. Um, when it goes public. <laughs> exactly. No, we're going to stay private. We're going to stay private. Gonna stay keep, private. Gonna stay yeah. private. <laughs> keep it clean. Yeah. Keep it clean. Yeah. That's it. Well, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. I mean, I'm, I'm, the products alone, I mean, there's just so many things to look at. And so when people are looking to get in touch with you, what's the best way? You can follow me on social media at Freddie Figures. Um, or you can follow, of course, follow Figures Wireless on Instagram. And you can always visit our website at figures.com. Okay. It's well. easy. Courtney? All across the board. I'm way less interesting than Ness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Ness, but I am on the social media universe at Stuart Starlet. Variety D. Well, you know, I feel like I just returned back to like a cousin's house or something, and I, like, yeah, well, <laughs> best cousin win. <laughs> so you can catch me, uh, <laughs> you can catch me, Variety D, V A R I E T Y, letter D for delicious. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so like blackberry, sweet the juice. And um, yeah, on Instagram, Twitter, Catch my YouTube channel. Got a new show, you guys. Come to my YouTube channel. Um, that's on wearing this T-shirt. Work in progress. Um, what's, the, what's the difference of this new show? Um, so basically, it's basically dissecting the Black British uh, comedy narrative and telling people, look, we do have these people. Like, for instance, fun facts for everybody. Um, back in the day, uh, in this country, Mums Maybe was the first Black woman to uh, do stand-up on television. Mm -hmm. uh, traditional television, sorry. Wow. But 30 years later, we had a, we have a woman called Angela Marr in the UK. 30 years on terrestrial television. What happened? Yeah, that's a big gap. You know, there's so many questions that we got to ask ourselves um, mm -hmm. in this country and in, in Britain. Because um, those are my first, you know, people I want to go and tell them. If you want to be a stand-up comedian, don't just run on, on these devices um, on technology. Sorry, Mr. Figure, but we have to uh, be real. <laughs> um, these microphones and our lungs are the best things in life because it makes people smile. You get to reach people, you yeah. know what I'm saying, before the technology. Yeah. You see, because if that Wi-Fi blacks out, it's then what are you gonna do? Yeah. You see, so it's that thing. I'm I'm pushing that kind of narrative towards the younger generation and the older to also um, have the respects. You know, the pioneers. Mm. You know, because we because here in America we have four kings. Yeah. Well, well, more than that. But like Richard Pryor, uh, Red Fox, Bernie Mac, um, any other ones up above in heaven. Where's our ones in Black Britain? We do have them. Yeah. We have Phyllis Dexter. We have uh, Malcolm Frederick who just passed away in December. You know, um, trying to think of any other ones now, but I can't think off the top of my head. Um, talking of life, life is very short. I nearly died last month, the 7th of January, because yes, I suffered from epilepsy. Mm. Also, I'm wearing purple, epilepsy awareness. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. You know? So I thank for the grace of God that I'm here, you yeah. know, to even tell the tale. Well, we're happy that you're here. We're thank you. So, again, Variety D. If you can't find me, Variety D comedian, Google it. There we go. Oh, you definitely right. got to look it go. up because she's all over the internets and yes. uh, doing big things. <laughs> doing big things. Very funny woman right here. You can find me at Daryl Christen on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on CBS's This Is LA. New season coming out yes, soon. It so, is. awesome. Check me out hosting on that on the weekend. Ow, so, ow. all right. Well, enjoy NAACP Awards. Yes, right. y'all. Make sure y'all tune in. This we'll be Saturday. covering yeah. and uh, we'll be reporting about it next week as well. well know and what I know, went down. I know you'll be up in there, Freddie, I'm sure. Doing uh, anything. We'll, we'll be, back with... be back in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll okay. be watching it at home, but that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be inventing something. <laughs> I'll watch from the best area in front of the television. Yeah. I'll hear that, <laughs> brother. From row seats. <laughs> from row seats. <laughs> Last one. What does NAACP stand for? Because we don't, we don't all know about that in England. Yeah. Uh, National, National Association of the Advancement of Colored People. people. All right then. Yeah, so you have to watch. No, I have to now. I'll be there. All right. Well, everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye bye. Staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined.